Hi Vinyl Community, John back again for my third video Heavy Metal and Hard Rock LPs number three. Um, cruising through my Heavy Metal and Hard Rock LPs from A to Z. Um, last video I finished at the end of B. I've already shown the only LP that I have because of C, which is Cauldron. Um, we're spinning. This album, Burn, I showed this at the end of my last video, it's a Swedish heavy metal band. Um, okay, so before I show any vinyl, it's going to tell you something really fun and pretty heavy metal, I guess, happened to me just this last week. On Wednesday, or was it Thursday, I live not far from Cardiff Airport. And I uh, was on my way home and I noticed a lot of commotion outside the airport. And there's a roundabout that I have to drive around and drive home around the airport. And there was a lot of people, police cars. And I thought, oh, maybe there's been an accident. Couldn't see any sign of an accident. And looked through the fence and what could I see but um, the Iron Maiden plane, Air Force, Air Force One, uh, parked right at the side of the airport. Um, I managed to get some film. Check this out. Was it that one that was the special one? Iron Maiden. Hey, that's a record my dad has. Well. My dad had that record. Oh, it's cool. That airplane looked really cool. <laughs> right, Daddy? You have that record? So, that's uh, the most heavy metal thing that's happened to me for a while. Okay, pressing on with some um, LPs. The first one is Demon. This is the first album by Demon. Um, Demon were a uh, new wave of British heavy metal band. Uh, this came out in 81. It's a label. It's on Clay. Career. Clay. Uh, it's an interesting band. You know that the name of the band and the sort of band logo and the album cover artwork would suggest that they're kind of some sort of really sort of hardcore sort of death metal band or something like that. Um, and in fact, yeah, the first track on this is an instrumental called Full Moon. It's very creepy and you're kind of expecting something really savage to come in after that short instrumental. But funnily enough, even though the guitar is quite jagged and, and sort of hard edged in, in many of the places, the songs were surprisingly commercial. I mean, there's tracks on here called Big Love, for instance. Um, what else has it got? Fathers of Time. I don't know. Some of the songs sound a bit more kind of hellish, like One Hell of a Night and. Uh, um, into the Nightmare, Night of the Demon, but the general scope of the song sounds a lot more, I wouldn't say AOR, but they're a lot more commercial than what uh, you just kind of feel that they're going to be. But hey, the 1981, uh, there you go. Uh, next album I'm going to show is their second album, the Demon. It's come out in 82, uh, The Unexpected Guest. Quite a nice little record, this. Uh, otherwise, it's more of the same. Great record to have. Uh, next album is kind of a biggie. I'm trying to avoid showing the ones that uh, everybody will be very familiar with, but this is the Dio, the first Dio album, Holy Diver. I can say about that, people don't already know. Great album, classic. I'm not going to show you Dokken. Uh, next album, Destruction. Infernal Overkill, this is called. In a sleeve. They're a German thrash band. This came out in 83. Um, Kind of interesting record, 
got some atrocious typography there. It always surprises me sometimes the way these, the way these uh, people do this. But uh, otherwise, the record's great. Yeah, quite a nice little label too. Banzai Records. Yeah, it's I guess quite a, a rarity, quite an unusual record. I've seen it go for sale a lot online. But you know what? I checked in my, my database. I think every piece of music I get, I put into my database. And I bought this um, before I started making the database because uh, um, there's no sort of entry date as to when I got it. And I started making the database at, the, at about the turn of the century, so 2000 roughly. Um, and I know for a fact that I would have paid very little for this because I'm a miser. I don't like spending too much money on a record. I probably spent about 10 kroner on it. And I bought it in Sweden, I definitely remember that. And I probably wouldn't have laid out more than 10 kroner because at that time, no one was interested in buying records. I was, but nobody I would else. I bought this at a Salvation Army store in Sweden, quite close to where I lived there. And um, yeah, they sold pretty much consistently records for, for 10 kroner each. So I would have spent spent that amount of money on this, certainly no more because otherwise I wouldn't have picked it up. If I were to go out and buy this now, it would cost me a small fortune. I had a, quite a disheartening experience this past week where I went to a small town. I'd just been talking to Dean Everest about this, about the idea of you know, getting in a car and driving to some remote village somewhere, checking out the, the second-hand stores and hopefully finding some nice well-preserved vinyl that no one else has found yet. Uh, I went to, on a trip to a small town at the base of a national park, about an hour and a half drive away from where I live. Um, hoping to find some nice uh, charity shops. I found a record shop actually in this town and was kind of amazed to see the prices of the records in this guy's store and the kind of cocky attitude behind, you know, with, with the guy that worked in this store selling his vinyls. It was less about sort of, you know, helping the customer find something they like, and more about telling people not to touch things if they weren't going to buy it. Horrible. Anyway, but I've got the records that he hasn't, so it's okay. Next one, Dr. Mastermind. I really like this record. Now this band, I understand, I believe, come from um, California. Could be wrong, but I think I remember reading that. It's just on Roadrunner. Okay, I've seen that before a hundred times. Um, I learned about Dr. Mastermind um, with the track that was included on a a Roadrunner um, compilation album, which I think I've shown in one of these past videos. Um, it had a lot of uh, guitar masters or something like that. Um, it had a lot of shredding on it. And I learnt the name of this band on that album and uh, actually went out and looked for it and found it. And it, and it is a really, really good record. Um, not much more I can say about that. It's got a certain Speaking sense of humour. Uh, just recently with uh, Metal Theologian all about humour in uh, thrash metal bands. It seems to me that a lot of the British thrash metal bands, for some reason, had a lot of humour in them, and the American ones took themselves a bit more seriously. Well, this one still takes itself quite seriously, but there's still a kind of element of comedy in, in some of the tracks. Um, and it does, yeah, it goes it goes well with the music. Great album, it is. I really enjoy that. One of my favourites, actually. I'm not going to show Europe. Get rid of those. Um... Okay, Electric Boys. This is a Swedish band. Uh, sort, of, sort of funk, funk metal, I suppose. I bought this in Sweden. I know that because I can see the 
this tab here which they put on all their records there um, it's on them vertical swirl um, yeah, I don't know whatever happened to them I think they, they probably run out of fuel eventually it was a release at a time when this sort of funk rock was kind of popular uh, very beginning of the 90s, this came out in 1990. This guy, Connie Bloom, I sat next to him on a train once in Sweden. Um, here's their second album. Pretty good. I mean, I, it was good at the time. A lot of this sort of stuff is dated quite a lot, I think. This is Groovus Maximus, and it came out in the. Uh, we got. 92, I've got. Yeah. On the swirl there, ready to go. Check them out. If you like oh, some of the chili peppers, uh, that kind of stuff, is it leaning against that direction? Exodus is the next one I've got here. Uh, I always thought that they were a German thrash band, but uh, pulling it out, just released, just uh, discovered that. Uh, they were actually American, and Kirk Hammett actually played uh, for this band in the beginning, apparently. So, Music for Nations is the record label. Surprisingly, they never made it bigger than they really did, but they're still going, I think. And the last two records. Uh, or extreme. They weren't particularly extreme. Yeah, more of this kind of funk rock type of stuff. Um, not quite sure what the label is. AM Records. Um, yeah. They had a lot of hits, didn't they, I think, in, the, in their day. And this record by theirs, this is the last one of this lot that I'm going to show today, is I remember going into the store buying this, came out in 92, uh, and I bought this when it was released um, from the record store. With the poster inside. Extreme. The next of their albums, I bought on CD and I didn't like it very much. This is cool, it's called Three Sides to Every Story. And it kind of has sort of three sides to the album, if you like. It's got kind of like a rocky side. Um, then you've got a bit more of acoustic things going on here. And then side three um, is actually one single piece. And that's kind of an interesting song. Um, you don't hear this done very often, or I don't think I've ever had it at all, but uh, they actually kind of create a track that goes on, I don't know how long it goes on for, I'll tell you here, but it goes on and it has different uh, motifs, themes in the music that kind of come to a crescendo in the end and interlocked and sort of create quite a harmonious piece of uh, rock music. Recommend it. Okay, so that's my last in my EE section, um, look out for my next heavy metal video. Thanks for watching. Bye.